Good morning, everybody. So on this talk, I want to introduce to the, you to the Pointly platform and a little bit more in general, also to show you a few use cases that we did in the past year in collaboration with partner and clients, where we used our AI tools to work on point clouds and more specifically classify them and extract some relevant information, some such as vector models. To get things started, so Pointly uh, was born as a platform for manually annotating point clouds. So by this, I mean that uh, a class was assigned from a predefined catalog to every point in the point cloud. It went much behind that, and I'm going to show you what, the, what I mean by that. But uh, just for the basics, it is as a, a software as a service solution, and it offers manual and automatic annotation of point clouds. Since a few weeks, it also offers uh, uh, vector is the possibility to draw vector model on top of the point cloud. And for big labeling company that needs to do that manually, it offers collaborative features so that uh, annotators, multiple annotators can work on the same project. And uh, our AI model can also be called via an API so that uh, everything can be done without going on our web-based solution but uh, via code. Um, beside the platform, we have also what we call the pointly services. Here we have um, basically collaboration for custom tailored solution with our clients. This ranges from uh, standard classification of specific data sets uh, to automatic extraction of vector model. We did that, for instance, for the Autobahn GmbH, and I'm going to show you an example later, but also creation of map layer and everything that is geo-related. The aim and the idea is to bring uh, all the stuff that we have uh, learned from the Pointly service and developed in-house to the web-based Pointly platform. What we managed to do until now is automatic and manual annotation in the Pointly platform. And you see an example of a point cloud classification here on the left. And that is also how the viewer of our web-based solution looks like. And, uh, vectorization, so ability to draw vector model. Here you don't see the point cloud, but uh, you can like make it transparent or not. Uh, you should imagine that you can draw on top of it. There will be a video about it later. This is a little bit like the general setting, but what I want to focus mostly on the next of the talk is uh, the deep learning automation. So as it, as it has been mentioned, I'm a data scientist at Pointly, so I've mostly been involved uh, with uh, developing the deep learning algorithm that can automate uh, these two processes. For this, we have what we call a standard classifier, which are just a few models that are available on the platform to the users, such so that the user can upload a point cloud, choose which model is uh, necessary according to its needs, and then uh, it will have uh, an automatic classification that can also be manually corrected on the viewer for the few cases where there will be misclassification. Until now, we have a classification for LiDAR ground classifier, and also a much more general standard classifier for airborne laser scan. By this, I mean that the point cloud is classified according to some uh, predefined classes that include, between others, ground, building, vehicles, vegetation, and street furnitures. We also did, in collaboration with the Regal and the Autobahn GmbH, a highway classifier, which, is scans mobile, which classifies the scans from mobile mapping along highways. And the classifiers did, in collaboration with the city of Munich, that uh, is specifically optimized for the Leica city mapper. Before showing you the examples and the project we worked on with clients, I want to show you how we develop such classifiers, so a little bit like the full uh, deep learning process that we use, the so-called pointly AI workflow. We start by focusing on which problem we want to solve. For instance, we want to develop a classifier to classify LiDAR aerial scan. Then uh, we go look for databases and uh, examples that are good for this, for, to solve this problem. We select specific tiles, and here we have to make sure that we cover, we have tiles that are representative and diverse enough. Then we manually label them, we train a model, and this involves the usual step that training a deep learning model involves, such as like hyperparameter optimization or class weights. Once the model is ready and we are happy with the accuracy and the metrics that we analyze, we deploy this model on the platform, and user can use it. Then 
we do some internal testing and uh, we get feedback from users and we see where the weakness of the models are. For instance, uh, it doesn't work particularly well for some uh, scenes uh, or it doesn't work with a certain scan. We classify certain point clouds that have this problematic. We include these newly classified point clouds uh, in our training data set and uh, with this expanded training data set, we are going to retrain the model, redeploy a version two of this model, which should work better. And in doing so, we create this iterative cycle that allow us to faster and faster improve our model. And this is the cycle that we used to work with some, in some specific projects. The first one of this project that I want to talk about was developed in collaboration with the UK mapping agency, so Ornan Survey, where we work together in order to classify the two data sets that they had. This is also a great example that shows that our deep learning approach can cover different kinds of point clouds. So as I already mentioned, we have a standard classifier for LiDAR aerial scans. And here we classify the data set, still aerial data, but coming from photogrammetric scans that had RGB information, but no intensity. Uh, we worked uh, on a training data set coming from the city of Romsey in England. And, um, this was validated by Ornan Survey on a city that is on the coastal path, Falmouth. And uh, as you can see, like on the left, it was uh, the testing set. And on the, on the right, it was the validation set. The transfer was pretty good. So what the model learned could be transferred also to different cities. We just had a problem, which was Falmouth is a coastal city. We didn't think about it. So classifying, for instance, uh, uh, something along the coast, uh, a promenade or a pier, boats, beaches, was problematic. But for this, we could have used our iterative approach to further classify just uh, these few problematic parts uh, and retrain the model. The second data set that we classified for Ordnance Survey was a completely different kind of scans. It was mobile mapping um, taken from a so-called street drone, which is like a Imagine like a small car, like a small smart with a sensor on top. And uh, they classified by driving along uh, the city of Romsey again, the full city. We just took uh, a few parts, a few tiles of this data set, developed the model. The catalog was a little bit different uh, than the one uh, for the previous data set because we could concentrate on smaller details, for instance, also differentiate between kind of balls uh, and road signs. And here you see just visually an example of our of our classifier worked for this data set. An example coming from a completely different field is a railway infrastructure classification. We worked on this project with DB Nets, which is part of Deutsche Bahn, within the project Digital Schiene Deutschland. Here, it was a proof of concept whose aim was to see if our classification, of course, we, defined, we decided on a different catalog, was good enough to then automatically classify many kilometers of railways and thus assist Deutsche Bahn in creating 3D models from the automatically classified point clouds. It is an ongoing project. Until now, we just did the proof of concepts. You can see a few results here. You see that we could mostly correctly classify the railways, catenary poles, um, power lines uh, and the extension, that is what is connecting the catenary poles to the power lines, uh, and uh, also some parts of train stations such as the platforms. Now we are working on improving classification on just uh, a few of these classing uh, and then extracting them to just uh, then derive vector data. Before going to show an example of the vector data, I also want to shortly mention that uh, we work with the city of Munich to classify the full city. They do yearly flight on the city. And uh, we got uh, the data set, I think, from last or two years ago. And uh, it was uh, done. And then uh, we developed the model based on, based on this data set. We just took a, a very few tiles. And we classified the full city that amounted to around 500 square kilometers of data. This was done uh, in approximately one week uh, using our API. And I want to show this because it goes to show that uh, our approach uh, is also very scalable. In fact, uh, we work on the cloud. We are based, uh, our infrastructure is a, a host on um, Microsoft Azure. And we basically can, on demand, uh, just turn on a few virtual machines more so that uh, all the point clouds can be processed in parallel. And uh, these were the example I want to show about point cloud classification. 
Before finishing and um, just showing you the latest feature of the platform, I want also to speak about the extraction of vector models. We can classify point clouds, but in the end, what uh, users and clients are interested in is a little bit more analytics out of it. Uh, typical examples, have you already seen also in the last few days, uh, are creation of 3D models. Here, we worked in collaboration of the, with the Autobahn GmbH to extract the line that is separating the asphalt from the rest of the ground. This is not uh, the road marking. It's a little bit trickier. It really has to do with the geometry of the asphalt, and we have to find where the asphalt finishes. This is usually done by a human expert with uh, which dedicated tools and software draws this line along many hundreds of kilometers of highways. So using this information and point clouds that has been obtained uh, using a, a scanner mounted on a car, we could create a deep learning model whose input was a point cloud and whose output was exactly this line. You can see in red the prediction of our model and in green the ground truth obtained by a human expert. And we have a very, well, a very good overlapping, at least visually. Of course, this is not enough for a user to be satisfied and say, great, we can just take this line and use it in production. We should just have a look at better metrics uh, and probably set uh, on a common threshold so that uh, we can show that the model is accurate enough. But uh, it is a first step to show that our approach also in this case goes in the right direction uh, and I'm confident we can reach the right accuracy in case uh, we have to get that far with better training data or just by fine tuning the model. The missing step is how can we create this training data? We can classify point clouds very well in the viewer and there are many softwares doing that. But we have problems generating training data by drawing lines or, point, or drawing points or polygons on top of a point cloud. That is why uh, in our latest release on the Pointly platform, we basically went exactly in this direction, which is allowing the user and ourselves as well to draw vector models on top of the point cloud. Here you can see we have a set of intelligence tools that allows us to create these three vector, um, vector, model, um, yeah, vector types. And uh, on the right, we also have uh, what uh, we call um, like um, um, the feature explorer, that it can also give uh, all of these uh, parts of the model, like some extra attributes uh, and the metadata, so that we can also save uh, how high something is, or how long a line is, or which kind of catenary pole is this line connected to. And uh, this is what we want to focus on next. And uh, the idea is that uh, we can see in the same interface uh, automatically classified point cloud and uh, just by a click, uh, turn it to a vector model and uh, see how the full picture looks like. And uh, this is just a hint of what we want to automate. Uh, and the first model should come uh, around January on the platform.